A key test in the run-in screening is the calf length test. This test assesses a runner's ability to have sufficient length through their calf and also determines the degree, if any, of stiffness in the ankle joint. Both are key measures for pain-free and fast running. So I'm gonna demonstrate here with Peter. Peter's gonna take his knee towards the wall and the idea is that the heel stays on the floor. Knee touches the wall. So for Peter, the distance from the wall of his big toe is 12 centimeters, which is great. That's above the minimal benchmark of 10 centimeters required for runners to have healthy uh, calf length. Obviously, a physiotherapist will assess the other side and record your data in the running screening table in the appendix at the back of the book. So one of the key measures we need to identify for a runner for their running chassis or their running body is their hamstring length. Let's have a look at how we measure this. It's called a straight leg raise test. So the physiotherapist will take the leg up to the first pointer of resistance. At that point, the physiotherapist uses a goniometer, measure the angle of the thigh, the midline of the thigh, relative to the horizontal, and that's the score. Peter's angle here is 66 degrees. Ideally, this leg length would be 80 degrees for runners. That's the safe zone. Just going over the other side. And on this side, Peter's 69 degrees. So that's the straight leg raise test, one of the key measures of the running screening. Have your physiotherapist measure both sides and record it in the running screening table in the appendix of the book. A key measure for a runner is the length of their quadriceps. If these are tight, the runner may be headed for all sorts of problems. How we test the quadriceps length by doing what we call the prone knee bend is we take the runner's foot towards their bottom. It's at the first point of resistance that we get a measure of how far the heel is from the bottom. And here we can see that Peter's heel is 18 centimetres from his bottom. Ideally, the heel would touch the bottom, i.e. zero centimetres. That's where you get a pass mark. Have your physiotherapist record your score in the back of the book, in the running screening table, in the appendix. Hip flexors are a key measure of a runner's screening. So for the hip flexor length test, the runner positions their bottom on the edge of the physiotherapist's table, hugs the knee into the chest with both hands, slowly lay back, head back on the table. We're then interested to see what the angle is of Peter's leg relative to the horizontal. Here we can see that Peter's leg is horizontal, which indicates a pass mark or a tick. If, however, Peter's leg or thigh was hinged up above horizontal, that would indicate that Peter has marked hip flexor tightness. You want your physiotherapist to grade it as either okay, tight, or below 90 degrees. Have a look at the table and uh, the physiotherapist can complete that in the appendix. A critical test for a runner is to determine what activity exists in the hip external rotation muscles. The test that we use to assess this is called a hip external rotation test and I'm gonna demonstrate with Peter. Peter, just lifting up your leg and pop a towel under it. It's important for the leg to be at 90 degrees. You need your physiotherapist to then do the, the following test. The runner's gonna take the foot into the middle here as far as they can. So come into the middle there, Peter, without lifting the thigh off the towel and without leaning the body. We simply drop the goniometer down and measure the angle, and Peter's angle is 26 degrees. The ideal measure for this test is 40 degrees, so have your physiotherapist record it in the table, in the appendix, and don't forget to test both sides. A key test for a runner uh, with their running screening is to determine how stiff or how much extension they've got in the middle of their shoulders. So for this test, it's called the combined elevation test. It's incidentally also extremely useful for triathletes and swimmers. I'm gonna get Peter to have a lay on the table and I'll demonstrate. Peter, come have a lay, head down the hole there, and come up into a streamlined position, arms up and overhead. Hands together, 
On the count of three, Peter's going to take his hands and arms up as high as he can without lifting his head. One, two, three. And relax. A key test for a runner is their side bridge endurance test. This is a measure of uh, ability to withstand the forces of collapsing as a runner gets fatigued. So the test for this is a side bridge plank test. And from here, Peter's gonna simply come up into a side plank position, hanging onto the shoulder, putting the bottom forwards so it's a nice straight line, top foot's across the bottom, and elbows directly under the shoulder and supported just to take load off the shoulder. Now, I'd have a stopwatch on here and I'll time Peter to the point of exhaustion. So it's a test of maximum endurance. What we'll notice when Peter gets fatigued is that this will start to drop and collapse and there'll be a bowing in the, in the hips. That's where we call time out and record the test. Obviously, we'll test both sides. Have your physiotherapist test you and record your score in the appendix in the running screening table.